Okay, welcome back everyone. Welcome to this class on um, keys to supernatural ministry. I know we uh, went over by a few minutes in the earlier lecture, so um, I think um, students will need a few more minutes to connect to this class, um, but thank you. Okay, so we're going to take a moment to pray and then we will get started. I'm sure the others will join in. Yeah, could somebody just pray with us together as a class uh, before we get started? Um, Christopher, why don't you play, pray with us, please? Let's start. Uh, yes, Pastor. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the time you've given us. Uh, in the in the classes that we've already attended, as well as the class that we're going to attend now, to get to know you better, to get to understand your word, and to help us to become more like you, Jesus. And also be with us Jesus, throughout, throughout the rest of the day. Um, keep us in good health, keep us, in, keep us safe from harm, and uh, help us to gain as much knowledge, wisdom in the class ahead and apply it in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Christopher. And thank you all for joining us um, in this class today. So we are going through keys um, uh, for supernatural life and ministry. We have uh, covered the first two keys, which is understanding the realm of the spirit and uh, faith. So we spent actually two lectures on faith. I want to get into the third and possibly the fourth keys today uh, that I want to present to us. We'll see how things go. Uh, the third key is the power of the word. Now, I haven't released uh, the lecture notes for it yet. I will do so after later today, after the class. Um, the third key that I want to present to us uh, to consider here is the power of the word. So first is understand the realm of the spirit. Understand the realm of the spirit. So when things are happening, you are very aware that there is a spiritual realm and you can deal with things from the realm of the spirit. You need to understand the dynamics of it. You know, I had a, something very interesting happen. It actually happened um, today, the day before, the day before. So today's, today's Thursday, yeah. So the day before, I was having a conversation with someone. And uh, now this is a very simple thing, but I wanted to, I just want to, I'm sharing it with you just to explain where you know, I'm going back to the very first key, understanding the realm of the spirit is very important. So having, I was having this conversation with this person and it was just, just a normal conversation. And I was sharing something, but it was completely misunderstood. It's completely misunderstood. And I was, you know, and so then, you know, the person that was saying was saying something different uh, from what I was saying. It was completely misunderstood. And it, it, it actually was turned back around uh, in a way that was putting me in, you know, uh, 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 it was coming back as an accusation. So I just kept quiet. I didn't want to, you know, uh, uh, get into an argument and just keep quiet. And then 
I suddenly realized, hey, you know, the enemy can take a simple conversation and, you know, use that, even the words we are speaking, use it in somebody else's understanding in a wrong way. So this is what I did. And I don't do this all the time, but in this particular case, this is what I did. So the next day, that is, that was yesterday, as I was praying, I took authority. I said, in the name of Jesus, I take authority over Satan. I take authority over every kind of spirit that is trying to cause confusion. And, uh, and you know, and, 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 and then it's putting these, I basically applied Second Corinthians chapter ten, verse four and five. Right? We, uh, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And having in readiness to avenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So Paul is really, you know, we often use Second Corinthians 10, 4 and 5 with respect to ourselves, but in the way it was written, Paul is using it in a way he was dealing with the community of people. He was dealing with the Corinthians. So basically saying, look, I can use these weapons in dealing with what was ha is happening there. Of course, you can use it, for, we use it for ourselves, you know, to protect our own minds. That is good. But in the way it was written, Paul is saying, I'm doing this. I have the authority to do this over you. So that's what I did. In this particular case, it was, you know, a conversation with a person, but you can, you know, Paul was uh, applying it to a community. So I did that. I said, in the name of take authority over this, I will not allow this to continue. I'm commanding it to stop. I'm commanding peace and good understanding uh, to, to come in. And, you know, just everything subsided. It was everything just... Just perfect. And I was like, wow. You know, it's like at one moment there was so much of confusion. And after, you know, the next day after praying and doing this, there was so much of peace. It's just like that whole thing disappeared. But the point was, it made me very aware that. The enemy can even take our simple words that we have to and try to twist it, turn it, put it, cause confusion in the minds of people in order to break down, you know, relationships or cause division and strife and all those kinds of things. Because that's what the devil wants to do. But when we know, when we understand the realm of the spirit, then we know what to deal with. Okay, so that's the first point we talked about, the realm of the spirit. The second thing that we spent two to two weeks on was about faith, a second key of faith, very important key for us, right? And how we receive by faith and how we help people receive by faith is so important uh, in, in experiencing the supernatural. The third key that I want to talk about today is the power of the Word of God. The power of the Word of God. And, and I think many of us understand uh, this word, this, this truth. But, um, you know, I, I want to just bring it to bear on our lives. And uh, something that happened in the last uh, couple of weeks, it was very unusual. Um, I think uh, two weeks ago, I think, two or three weeks ago, recent, recent. In one week, I had three different married couples reach out for help three different and uh, you know they were having problems in the marriage three different in one week now usually i would send them to our counselors <laughs> i would say you know go to go for marriage counseling you know uh, but uh, the situations in these three cases were different in one case, the first case, the husband didn't refuse to go to any counselor. Uh, in the second case, they've already gone through a lot of counseling from different people. 
And in the third case, similarly, they it was a little more aggressive situation. So they had already been through some help. It was not, you know, not helping. So it's just like, hey, it's all coming in the same week. Uh, but you know, now I'm not a I'm not a marriage counselor. I'm not, you know, that's not what I do. Uh, but these are people that we need to help. Um, it was very interesting. So in the first case, I told the wife, I said, you know, you tell the husband, I want to talk to both of you and so we'll set up a call. And so he agreed, at her, for whatever reason, he agreed to speak. And so that's how it got started. And the other two, they were ready to speak, even though I, you know, anyway, so. But what happened was, uh, it was around the same time, especially when I started off with the first, before I started with the, working with the first couple, I remember this was all coming together the same week, you know, to handle all three. It's not easy. And, uh, I, I, and, I, and I was praying, and it kind of just dropped into my spirit how to handle this, this, particular, this particular situation. It's like, here are five steps you walk these couples through. And usually, you know, when I meet with couples, they'll come and both will start talking about history, you know, what happened ten, from 10 years ago, they will start complaining and all of that. But this time, it just came, you know, just this whole, this whole idea of how to work with these couples came, said, don't even ask them anything about the past. Now, start with the word of God. Start with the word of God. So with all these three couples, I'm following the same five steps. You know, it just all happened the same week. Step one for all of them. And I'm not saying this is a magical formula or neither am I saying, uh, you know, uh, uh, this is the only solution. I, I, that's not, I'm just giving you an example of what is happening. Okay. I'm just sharing with you. That's all. So don't say, you know, this is the only way to do it. No, I'm just saying this is what happened. Just like I think uh, this started uh, three weeks, two, three weeks ago, just recently. Anyway. So with each of these couples, and of course, we're doing this on Zoom because we're not meeting in person and some of them are in different cities. Uh, actually, two of them in our city, one of them in uh, one couple is, in our, is, is a different city. Um, but we're doing this on Zoom. So the first call, I just said, see, step one, we need to go to the Word of God. Find out what did God say about marriage. I'm going to give you five scriptures. I want you to you to study the scriptures. And I'll meet with you after three days. I want you to tell me what is God's instruction for you as a husband? What is God's instruction for you as a wife? So I didn't sit down and listen to why they are fighting, why they're having all this. No. First thing, go to the word of God. Now, what is so amazing is... And all these, all three couples, they've all taken this so seriously. And, and I don't know how it is happening. You know, you, you would think they will fight and do all of this. Song, but it, it, no. They all went, they read those five passages, scripture, it's just, you know, five passages on marriage, what the Bible says. And the word of God God's word started working in their hearts. And I can tell you now, it's only been you know three weeks or something now. Um, sorry, maybe two or three weeks. Okay. So I'm, I'm meeting with them like, you know, online every three days. One couple are meeting them once a week, but the others are meeting every Saturdays and Wednesdays. It's amazing. I told them, I didn't tell, explain the scriptures to them. I told them, you read these five scriptures. 
step one. What is God's instruction? What is the gap? Step two is what is the gap? What, are you, what do you need to change in order to follow the scripture? Step three, I'm giving you these, I think I gave them another set of eight, eight to 10 scriptures. These are the promises concerning the home, the family, the children. What did God say? You read the scriptures. So what is happening here? In, in, in dealing with what's going on, we are intentionally exposing them to the power of the word of God. And that's all that was, you know, so these five steps that, is, that came into my heart when, when this whole thing, all these problems came at the same time was don't do what you normally do. Sit and listen to why they are fighting and why they are arguing. No, just start with the word. Tell them to go to the word, read the scriptures. Why? Because of the power of the word. And I'm seeing, and it's only been about three weeks now, I'm seeing the change that's happening in these three couples. Now, all of them have been married uh, nine plus years. So it's not early in the marriage. They've already been married nine plus years. I'm seeing in their lives, all three of them, how the word of God is changing them. I'm not doing any big counseling or I'm just letting them, and I told uh, them, every day you read one chapter in Proverbs. So read these five scriptures every day, one chapter in Proverbs. Seeing them being exposed to the word and letting the word bring about the change. Now, this is not supernatural healing in the sense of physical healing, but it definitely is is, is, it's the word of God affecting these situations, these individuals and in the situations they're going through. So this is the third key I want us to emphasize. I want to emphasize in the ministry, which is the power of the word of God. And this is the same when, when you're dealing with, uh, you know, whether it's a physical healing, uh, whether it's a change in a financial situation, whether it's a change in a marriage situation, whether it's a, a emotional healing, uh, you know, whatever the, the, the need is. Of course, the reason we are looking for the supernatural is because we want God's intervention in our life, in our life situation, uh, different situations that people are going through. But we must understand the power of the word of God to bring about that change, to cause that supernatural to take place. And uh, uh, it may take place in, in this case, in, the, in working with these three couples, you know, it's taking place over time, but it's the word of God that's God is doing it by his word. So what must we do in order to receive a supernatural work in our lives? Whether it's for us personally or whether it is for people, other people we must learn to tap into the power of the word of God. The power of the word of God. We must learn to tap into that. Because we know, we know, right? God works by his word. The word of God is alive and full of power. That means the word of God is a carrier of the power of God. So, um, when we receive the word, we're actually receiving the power of the word to work in us. So for us personally, as well as when we are ministering to people, we need to emphasize the word of God. Now, uh, many people don't like this because 
Uh, they just want, you know, just wave your hand at me and let the miracle happen kind of, kind of thing. Uh, now, thank God there are times when that happens, when somebody just lays hands on you and things happen. Uh, that is valid. God does work through that way. But to receive a miracle through the word of God means I am I need to make an effort. Or a person the people we are ministering to need to make an effort. And I think the best way this 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 this, this is captured for us is in the parable of the sower, right? And that Jesus gave us in Mark chapter four. Uh, Matthew 13, Mark 4, Luke 8, parable, par parallel scriptures on the parable of the sower. Uh, the sower went to sow. Seed fell on the wayside, on stony ground, among thorns, and on good ground. And Jesus said, the seed is the word of God. It means the seed is the word of God. Or God's word is like seed. It carries the potential to produce in our lives. And so we intentionally take that word into our lives. We intentionally take that word into our lives. Since you're sowing seed. Now, sowing seed is takes time and effort. right? It's not as simple as you stand in a prayer line and the anointed man or woman of God lays hands on you and says, be healed. It's not as simple as that. Sowing seed takes time. Like you have to open the Bible, you have to meditate in the scriptures, you have to receive the scriptures, you have to hear it. But Jesus said, this is the way God works. He said, so is the kingdom of God. He said, this is the, this is the way the kingdom of God is. This is one of the operations of God's kingdom. This is the one of the ways the king of the kingdom operates. The seed principle, to the seed of the word. So we take time, receive the seed of the word. And then it, you know, it goes through the process of germination. You protect the seed and the seed produces and you receive a harvest. What is the harvest? The output of the word of God. The word of God being fulfilled in your life. The word of God bearing fruit. What is that? It is supernatural. It is supernatural. So for ourselves and when we are ministering to people, whatever the need is, Right. Um, I, I began by looking at an example with this marriage situation. Uh, there's a need. But the need could be something else in somebody else's life. It could be healing. It could be something else. But we take them to the same thing. God, I'm going to get them to listen to your word. I'm going to get them to receive your word because I know that you work through your word. And if they, if they can understand this, they can continue doing it on their own. So we use the word of God as seed in order to experience the supernatural. That's one. But the same word of God is also a sword. This is Ephesians chapter 6. So the word is a seed. So one way I get the word of God to work in me or in people's lives is through interacting with the word of God as seed. You sow the seed. Another way, again, by the power the, to exercise or experience the power of the word is by using the word of God as our sword. The sword of the spirit. What does that mean? Ephesians 6, 17. It means, the Bible says, and you take the sword of the spirit. That means I take it. I use it. But the Holy Spirit goes into action. Because it's the sword of the spirit. So the Holy Spirit gets on the situation. Now, what we see in the Bible is 
the sword is the spoken word. Right? In Revelation 19, we see Jesus coming on the white horse and there's a double-edged sword going out of his mouth. So it's a clear indication that is the word of God being spoken. It's coming forth. It's the spoken word is the sword of the spirit. So how do I take or how do we take the sword of the spirit by, by us speaking the word of God with our mouth? So in order to see the supernatural, here's the other way, second way, uh, is uh, uh, supernatural by the power of the word of word is by speaking the word of God into the situation. That means we're engaging in battle. So one, you're being a farmer. In the other case, you're being a soldier. But both is you're engaging with the word of God to experience the power of God for a supernatural work to take place. So in one case, you're sowing the seed. In another case, you're speaking the word. So there are times when people will come uh, you know, with their problems, with their situations, and that they want a supernatural thing to take place. It's okay. Speak the word. Take the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. You speak the word. What will happen? You will, the Holy Spirit goes into operation and the power of the word of God goes into effect in your life to see the work of God take place, to see the miracle of God take place. So two things, the power of the word, both for our personal lives and for people that we're ministering to. We get them to engage with the word of God in these two ways. One is by sowing the seed. Another one is by speaking the word. And people begin to see things change in their lives. They begin to experience. And you, you can do this for yourself personally. And you can also do this for others. That means you tell them to do it. You tell them, look, you want to see the supernatural work of God. Here's one key. Here's one important way for you to experience the supernatural in your life. It's through the power of the word. We believe in the power of the word of God. There are two simple ways you can engage with the word. By sowing the seed of the word in your life through reading it, meditating it, believing it. Secondly, by you speaking that word into your circumstance. Use it as a sword against the enemy. Speak it against every work that Satan is doing and you will see the power of the word of God bringing a supernatural work in your life. You all with me so far? Okay. So that's the third key. First key, understand the spiritual realm. Second key we talked about is faith. Third key is the power of the word. Speak the word. And you will sow the word, speak the word. Okay. I'm not you know, doing a full study on the word of God and that's something we've already done in other courses. I'm just highlighting this very important key of supernatural. I'm going to go to the fourth key. The fourth key is the power of a renewed mind. The power of a renewed mind. We need this key. So these are all keys. That means this is how God is going to work the supernatural for, for you personally or when you're ministering to other people. 
we have to use these keys. So the fourth key is a renewed mind. A renewed mind. What is a renewed mind and why is a renewed mind very important? I think the best way to explain a renewed mind is from the passage in Isaiah 55, verses 6 through 11. And, and I'm just quoting this and I'm you not know, reading it, but I'll just mention it. Isaiah chapter 55, verses uh, 6 through 11. And we are all familiar with this passage. Jesus says, uh, not Jesus, <laughs> Isaiah 55, 6 through 11, the scriptures say, let the wicked forsake his ways. Let the unrighteous man forsake his thoughts and let them come to the Lord. Let them return and I will have, I will pardon them abundantly. Because my ways are not your ways and my thoughts are not your thoughts. Whereas the heavens are high above the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. So what is God saying? God is telling the wicked and the unrighteous, so we were all there at some point. He's saying, let the wicked, let the unrighteous forsake their ways and their thoughts and let them come to the Lord. And although it is not stated there, the implication is let them forsake their ways and their thoughts and let them take on the ways and thoughts of God. Because he says, look, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. But what I want you to do is I want you to forsake your ways and your thoughts. Come to me. Implication, take on my ways and your, my thoughts. And my ways and my thoughts are much higher than the ways and thoughts of man, is what God said. And in that context comes verse 10 and 11. He says, for as the rain comes down from heaven and waters the earth and causes the earth to bud and bring forth and yeah, you know, give fruit, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It will not return to me void. So in that context, he's giving his word. That means it's the word of God that's going to help me do this. It's the word of God that's going to help me leave aside my ways, my thoughts, and embrace the ways and thoughts of God. So what is a renewed mind? We're talking about the fourth key. The fourth key is the power of a renewed mind. What is a renewed mind? A renewed mind is a mind that thinks in line with the ways and thoughts of God. That's a renewed mind. So in the scriptures, the New Testament scriptures, we see three states of mind. There is the natural mind, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. There is a carnal mind, Romans chapter 8. And then there is a renewed mind, Romans chapter 12, or a spiritual mind. That's also in Romans 8. So three states. There is the natural mind, 1 Corinthians 2. There is a carnal mind, Romans chapter 8. And there is the spiritual or renewed mind, Romans 8 and Romans 12. So as a believer, as a believer, we must only operate with our natural mind and our renewed mind. We need our natural mind to do natural things. So the natural mind is a mind that's limited by the five physical senses. So, you know, we need that. We use it all the time. You know, so today to connect to this class, you used your natural mind, not your spiritual mind. Because in your natural mind, you know, you go to Google Classroom, uh, you go to this particular class, you know, you'll see the link there, you click on the link, it'll open up Google Meet, then you connect to the class. That was your natural mind at work, and it's good, you need it. God created it for us, you need it. And we have to use it. 
the flesh, the carnal mind or the fleshly mind is a mind that is focused on the things of the flesh. It's not things on the spirit. So it's focused on gratifying the sinful evil desires of the body and soul. So that's a fleshly mind, carnal mind. As a believer, you and I are not to have a carnal mind. You stay away from it. But the other state in which we operate is the spiritual mind, the renewed mind, which is we mind the things of the spirit or we think in according to the ways and thoughts of God. That's the renewed mind or the spiritual mind. So as a believer, we must learn how to move between the natural mind and the spiritual mind or the renewed mind. So there are times we are operating in the natural mind, which we all must do. But we must seamlessly transition into the spiritual mind, back and forth, back and forth. I think a great example of this is in John chapter 6, when Jesus was going to feed the 5,000 people. So he had been speaking to them for three days. So it was a really long sermon. <laughs> He'd been speaking to them for three days. And they really didn't take much breaks. It says, you know, they hadn't anything to eat. And uh, and Jesus calls his disciples and he says, give them something to eat. It's possible the disciples started this conversation. They said, Lord, you know, they've been here with us three days. They've not had anything to eat. You know, so the natural mind is at work which is good. They're moved with compassion. The people haven't had anything to eat for three days. It's a natural mind. Observing is good. But now Jesus puts out a thing saying, you give them something to eat. So Jesus, this, was, this conference was not prepared. He did not take any registration fees. Uh, we did not book any rooms for all these people. And I'm just being silly here. But, you know, the disciples are like, what is Jesus telling us? You know, telling us uh, to give, give them, uh, how do I turn this off? Okay. Uh, to give them something to eat. How do we do that? So, there is uh, Philip. Let's see. Now. I just want to go back to the story here so that I get uh, the right names, who did what. But one of them, I think it's Philip, who says, Lord, uh, yeah, so Philip, uh, yeah, this is John 6 and verse 7. So Philip is the accounting man. He's operating with a natural mind. So he comes in John 6, verse 7. He says, Lord, uh, you know, where shall we, this is John 6, verse 30, verse 30, where shall we buy bread that we may eat? So he's, he's looking at it with his natural mind, right? Very big, first of all, problem is, which bakery can we go to to buy food or buy bread for 5,000 people? First problem. Second problem, this is in verse 7, and there's not enough money. He's done the calculation. He says 200 denarii is not enough. So maybe he's, he knows how much money is there with Judas. Probably they had 200 denarii or whatever. I don't know. So he knows the calculation. So this is the natural mind at work. And there's nothing wrong with it. So these are facts. So he says, first problem. So Philip is the natural mind at work. right? First problem, which bakery can we go to? And, uh, oops, sorry. Uh, second, we don't have the money. So even if there was a bakery that could supply all this, uh, we don't have the money. So that's the natural mind. Now, as believers, we do use our natural mind. There's nothing wrong with it. And that's what Philip was doing. But if you want to see the supernatural, You've got to move out of the natural mind into the renewed mind or the spiritual mind. So what happens next? 
Andrew comes. I don't know what Andrew was thinking. I don't know. But he does something very unusual. Jesus has told his 12 disciples, let us feed, feed the multitude. Give them something to eat. Andrew is bringing a young boy who has his lunch there and says, Lord, there are five loaves and two fish. Now, the scripture is not saying what Andrew was thinking. The scripture is not saying what Andrew was thinking. So anything we say is only imagination. But why would Andrew bring a boy's lunch to Jesus? And why do it anyway? You've got 5,000 people, you've got five loaves and two fish. Why even bother? I mean, he could have said, Go, boy, quietly go and have your lunch somewhere. Andrew could have done that. He could have said, he could have sent the boy away and said, go have your lunch. But he brings that to Jesus. And I am only speculating here. I know this is not in the Bible. But I'm imagining Andrew was stepping into the spiritual mind, the renewed mind. I'm imagining him having a picture in his mind saying, can God, can the Lord take these five loaves and two fish and multiply it and feed these people. I'm imagining this. It's not there in the Bible. Okay. Beth has a different thought here. Could be Beth. Could be. <laughs> so Beth is saying maybe he said feed the Guru first. Okay. Uh, okay. That's funny. But anyway, so Jesus says, you know, I'm just imagining. So whatever we say here is just imagination, right? So Jesus is saying, feed the multitude. Philip says, not enough bakery, not enough money. Andrew is bringing five loaves and two fish. And I want you to see this now. A miracle has to happen. But how does it happen? Just imagine if you were one of the 12 disciples, okay? You were, imagine you were standing there. You've placed five loaves to fish in the hands of Jesus. You're there. There are 5,000 men, women, children, so totally we don't know how many. Jesus takes the five loaves, 12 disciples around him. He breaks it and gives each, each one a small piece. So you've got a small piece of bread in your hand. He breaks each the fish. He puts a piece of fish in each of the 12 disciples. He puts a piece of fish in your hand. So what do you have in your hand? You've got a piece of bread. You've got a piece of fish. Now you are one of the apostles, man. You're one of the 12 disciples. You're there with Jesus. And then Jesus tells them, turn around. So you, each one of you turn around. And you look in front of you. <laughs> the piece of bread and the fish that you have in your hand is not enough for you. And Jesus says, go and give it. Go and give it. Go and get it. So now you have a choice to make. You can operate in your natural mind or you can operate in your renewed mind. If you want to operate in our natural mind, we won't take a single step. Why? Because you know the piece of bread you have in your hand and the fish you have in your hand is not enough even for you. 
What are you going to do? Go and give it there to whom? But if you're going to operate, if you operate in your renewed mind, you're saying, look, I don't understand this. But the master said, go and distribute it. That's what he says in verse 11. He gave it to his disciples. And they had to go and distribute it. So you are one of them. So you're walking to the first group of 50 people. You've got a piece of bread, you've got a piece of fish. And there are 50 people in front of you. And you're walking. You're walking in what? Not your natural mind. You're walking, you're actually out of your natural mind. And you're in your renewed mind. So if people call believers as out of their mind, it's true. We're out of our natural mind, but we're in our renewed mind. In the renewed mind, you're walking according to the ways and thoughts of God. You're out of your mind. You're out of the natural. You're in the renewed, the spiritual. And so you're walking to this group of 50 people, but you're walking with your renewed mind. You have one piece of bread, one piece of fish, 50 people in front of you. What did Jesus say? Distribute. How will you do it? Not on the basis of your natural mind, because your natural mind, you will not give it to anybody. You will eat it and you'll still feel hungry. But in your spiritual mind, you start giving. You give it to the first person. Then you realize the moment that left your hand, you've got some more in your hands. Give to the next person. Give to the next person. And you realize a miracle is taking place. So the only way you and I could co-work with Jesus as one of his disciples on that mountain that day is by walking with a renewed mind, a spiritual mind. Not by a natural. Philip, he was sincere. He was a good man. But in his natural mind, he was trying to figure out how many bakeries, how much money. That doesn't work. It cannot produce the supernatural. Andrew initiated something that demanded that all the disciples walk with a renewed mind. But stepping into the renewed mind is what released the flow of a miracle that fed 5,000 people and more. We, we don't know how many men and children were there. So the point is this. To see the supernatural, or to experience the supernatural. We have to step out of the natural mind to the renewed mind. The renewed mind sees things from the ways and thoughts of God. It sees possibilities. It sees miracles. It sees the impossible being made possible, which the natural mind cannot and does not. Because the natural mind is based on the five senses, and we, ha we live in it and we have to operate in the natural mind, you know, for our day-to-day -day lives. But in order to release the supernatural, we have to step into the renewed mind. Okay. I'm going to pause here. We will, uh, I, will I'll, I will put this in the document, share it with you. Uh, we will discuss this more uh, next week. But we talked about two keys today, the power of the word of God, which I think most of us understand. But we have to talk a little bit more on the renewed mind. How do we make the move? What are some of the problems we face? So we said there are three states, the natural, the carnal, and the renewed or the spiritual mind. As believers, we have to operate only in the natural and the renewed. For all our day-to-day -day life things, we are operating in uh, the natural mind. So the scriptures, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 to 13. Uh, it talks about the natural mind. Actually, in that passage, it's contrasting the natural mind and the spiritual mind. Maybe we could study these in detail if you wish, but I was just trying to give you the essence of it. Okay. 
Any questions before we pray and dismiss? Maggie, go ahead. Thank you, thank you, sir. Um, just uh, a battle to understand the difference between natural mind and carnal mind, because uh, when someone doesn't know Christ, I believe that that is natural mind. Is using this natural mind. So when does carnal mind come in? Comes in, and what's the difference between those two? Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah, so uh, an unsay, okay, so so uh, let's put it like this. The natural mind is neutral. Neutral, that means it's just us, you know, living in the natural world. The carnal mind is the natural mind that is pursuing evil things. That means uh, it's, it's like Romans chapter 8 talks about it. It's, it's the gratifying of evil things, evil desires. That is the carnal mind. It's fleshly, flesh ruled. So even a believer could be walking with a carnal mind. You know, Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 3, he rebukes the Corinthians. He says, you are carnal. Romans 8 is also addressed to believers. And he's saying, you know, you are carnal. If, if you walk as, if you're carnally minded, you will die. He's talking to believers. That means... They are pursuing gratification of the sinful desires of the flesh and the soul. That's the carnal mind. So the difference between the natural mind is, the natural mind is neutral. Okay, it's just us doing the normal daily things of life. You wake up, you wash your face, brush your teeth. It's your natural mind at work. You're just doing the normal daily things that you have, that you need to do in this world. The carnal mind is doing the evil things. The renewed mind or the spiritual mind is pursuing the things of God, the things of the spirit. We are walking according to the ways and thoughts of God. Does that help, Angie? Yes, 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 it does. Thank you, sir. Okay. okay. So, Um, uh, yeah, so Anita's question is, we rebuke the spirit, should we continue rebuking evil or should we just say be healed? Well, I think um, the answer to that question, there's, there's no, no universal answer, but the practical way to do it is until the spirit leaves, until you see the evil thing depart, you continue rebuking it. Right now, sometimes, uh, or, or I would say many times, say the, the evil one is stubborn. Right, they don't want. Even they resisted Jesus when Jesus, uh, you know, said go, said no, we don't want. To, you know, you send us off here. I think. So they they try to resist. Or sometimes, right, and look, uh, look for. You know, they throw and they make all uh, all kinds of things. They're trying to be stubborn. They don't want to go. So that's why. Uh, when we're dealing with evil spirits, you now we rebuke until they leave, until we see that they left. So the answer to your question is you rebuke till they leave, and then the healing part, which is the mend mending or making whole of whatever was damaged, or whatever was you know uh, not working properly, you speak. So we do both until we see the result. All right, so we will continue this next week. Uh, we looked at two additional keys today. The uh, power of the word of God, power of God's word. And secondly, the power of the renewed mind. Uh, we'll spend a little bit more time on the renewed mind next week and then move forward. Uh, uh, so I, what I need to share with you is how do we transition? Okay? How do we go from natural to renewed and back? Right, so basically, uh, we need to have this smooth seamless flow of I'm operating the natural, but I also need to step into the renewed mind. Uh, sometimes it's, uh, we get so com comfortable with the natural that we hesitate to step into 
the spiritual. And that's when we miss out on the miracles because, you know, we all like the comfortable natural mind, but you have to step out of your mind into the renewed mind, the spiritual mind to see the miracles of God. Okay. We have to talk about that. All right. One more question in between sowing the seed and seeing results can the process in between, can it be accelerated? Hmm. Interesting question. Can it be accelerated? Hmm. Can it be accelerated? Can I do something to speed it up? Hmm. Interesting question, Prabhakar. Uh, I'm not sure I have the answer. I'm just thinking of what Jesus spoke in uh, Mark 4. You know, right after the parable of the sower, he gave this other parable. He's, he kind of continued on the same theme. And I'm looking at Mark 4, I think, verse 20 onwards. Uh, he said, uh, so is the kingdom of God. So he's continuing. As if a man should sow seed and should sleep and rise night and day. And uh, he says, the seed begins to spring and grow up. He does not know how. That means he doesn't know the whole germination process and all that. He doesn't understand all that. He just puts a seed. He and Night and day goes by. And then he says, he sees first the blade, then the ear, then the full corn in the ear, and then he puts in the sickle for the harvest has come. So your question is, can we speed that process up? And, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, uh, can we speed it up? interesting <laughs> I mean and we're talking about spiritual terms so you know can we do something to make this happen faster you know, my my inclination my inclination is you know uh, as long the, the best thing we can do is to present a conducive in my environment for the seed to produce. See, that's the thing we can do. Right? That means to that extent, you know, spiritually, like what Abraham is saying, uh, those are things that we determine, right? The, the engagement with the word and prayer and so on, right? So to that extent, yeah, our part is involved. But there's a part that I don't always understand, like people have shared about the timing and that work of God. We don't always understand. So to answer your question, I think there's this convergence of my part and God's part. My part is definitely something I can do, right? I can, I can spend more time in the word. I can engage more intensely in prayer. So for, for instance, there are certain things now I'm, I'm really contending for in prayer. So I'm taking extra time to just pray over that matter because I want to see something happen. So that is my part, you know, instead of not praying, I'm praying more. Definitely that's my part. Uh, instead of not contending, I'm contending even more. I'm going after it. So that's my part. So that to that extent, you know, we can be involved to pursue the miracle. But there is a part that I don't understand, which is, you know, when God comes through, you know, and that's like uh, what some have people have mentioned here on the chat on the timing, the Kairos, right? So I think there's this coming together. So to answer your question, yes, we can do something for the things that we are responsible for, which is to take the word of God, to go after them, miracle to go after it with intensity all that is our part we can do it um, the other element where, where, where you know god is moving through that uh, that is some uh, yeah yeah that uh, that is something just yeah so Beth is saying, yeah, you know, we could delay things, but not necessarily speed up things. Yeah, so from our side, we can do things. 
but uh, from God's side, that's a part that God will do, God will determine, and God will speak. Yeah. Yeah, thanks to all who have shared. Uh, you know, I, I'm not saying I have the answer here. I'm just, I, I'm, I'm thinking through on it. And uh, this is what I feel that to the extent we are involved, we can definitely be there and do our part. And then God has to come through on his side. That's a good question. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Kennedy, I see your I see your comment too. Okay. All right, we've uh, taken more time. Uh, let's wrap up and. Um, yeah, there are so many things we need to think about and learn and understand still. Yeah. Okay, let's close up in prayer today. Uh, we've had uh, three hours together. It's been wonderful. Thank you for being part of the classes today. Who would like to pray and close so that we can dismiss? Anyone? Can I pray? Go ahead. Go ahead, Sons. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much uh, for a time like this, our knocking of glory, that we are being trained as you tell us that as iron sharpens iron, so does man sharpen man. Thank you for our lecture. Thank you for uh, what we are learning. Lord, we pray that you would increase our faith so that we shall live in the supernatural. And as we go, the Lord will keep us, will help us also to read again through the PDFs that have been shared. And we will be able to learn more. And for your, for your glory and for our good, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, everybody. Uh, and, uh, yeah. Thank you all. Have a good uh, rest of the day or evening or morning, whichever part. Yep. I'll see you again soon. Thank you, Pastor. God bless you. Now. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. God bless. God bless. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you.